Milan has been at the crossroads of history since Roman times. Today, Italy's foremost economic and industrial center is a controversial tourist destination, despite boasting a plethora of activities, top-tier hotels, and being a fashion capital. The high prices, weather, serious locals, and busy lifestyle in Milan is often a turnoff for visitors. We often get asked, is Milan worth visiting? We maintain that if you arm yourself with good information and manage expectations, you can prove the haters wrong and have a good time. Today we're featuring the best things to see and experience in Milan so you can make up your own mind whether Milan is overrated or worth the hype. Everything from artistic masterpieces, world-class shopping, eco-friendly architecture, and even a castle. Like most places in Italy, Milan is often best experienced first with a local guide. Check out the variety of tours available throughout the city on our website. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to keep up with all of our great content on our channel. You know, right now we're kind of in the epicenter of Milan. We're right behind the Galleria in front of the Leonardo statue, who's an adopted son of Milan that looks onto probably the world's greatest opera house. In 1857, Emperor Franz Josef commissioned a statue of the Renaissance master Leonardo da Vinci to commemorate the artist's 400th birthday. After several delays, the monument measuring 4.4 meters was unveiled by artist Pietro Magni in Piazza della Scala. The inscription still reads, To the renovator of the arts and sciences, born in Vinci, long an envied guest in Milan, where he had friends, disciples, and a glory. Italians are master mixologists, with many classic cocktails born right here in Italy. Milan is still home to some of the top cocktail bars in the world, including Camparino, located in the city center. You might have heard of Aperol Spritz, but here in Milan, the rage is Campari Seltz. And this particular cafe, Camparino, right across from the cathedral in the Galleria, is where this famous cocktail of Milan was born. And Trust me, there is no better place to have it in the city than Camparino. So I'm about to head up to the Branca Tower, which is this big metal skyscraper tower thing. And you can go to the top and get a bird's eye view of Milan, a different perspective of this incredible city. So let's check this out. The 108-meter-tall Branca Tower was built in 1933 and offers sweeping views of the city. An elevator races you up 355 feet to the top observatory. It's located in the middle of a well-manicured park called Parco Sempione. Combine this with the nearby Sforza Castle and you got a pretty nice, family-friendly half-day of activities. Milan is a fashion capital, attracting fashionistas and shoppers from around the world to its luxury stores. If you're a shopper or looking for a special gift for someone, it's hard to beat the shopping in Milan. Louis Vuitton is right here on the corner, so all the major luxury Italian brands are gonna be on the street for sure. This incredible triumphal arch here on the back side of the Sforza Castle may remind you of the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. And if it does, you're absolutely correct because this was built in the early 19th century to sort of honor the incoming Napoleon. And those horses that you see up at the very top were supposedly facing France at one point. But once everyone realized Napoleon was a megalomaniac, they turned the horses around. It's an absolutely free sight to see right here in Milan. As with everywhere in Italy, food in Milan is regional and you should always try the local dishes and drink the local wine. The two standouts here are the famous risotto alla milanese and cotoletta alla milanese. I mean, it's just like an incredible color and the creaminess comes from the starch of the particular rice that they're using, which is, you know, a type of arborio rice or vialone nona rice and it is just spectacular. So this is the main event for my meal, which is the Cotoletto di Vitello alla Milanesa. And it is a thinly sliced piece of veal that's been pounded and lightly fried in this super, I mean, can you hear that? How like crispy that is gonna be. The vertical garden, or Bosco Verticale, is one of the world's most iconic skyscrapers. 
the changing seasons transform its green architectural composition, featuring over 15,000 plants and 90 different species of trees, making it a renowned symbol of green urban development and urban forestry. Just because Milan is a busy city doesn't mean coffee culture isn't alive and well. There are plenty of places to have a great cup of coffee, even historic cafes like this one here that was started in the 19th century by one of Napoleon's soldiers. As soon as you walk into the courtyard of the Palazzo Breda, you're immediately greeted by this gargantuan statue of Napoleon by Canova. And this place was originally established in the early 19th century to house the looted art by Napoleon. So it's kind of fitting that there's still a statue of him here. The picture gallery is located upstairs, above one of Italy's most prestigious art schools. All of the heavy hitters are present, like Titian, Rubens, Tintoretto, the Bellini brothers, and the emotional and brutal Lamentation Over the Dead Christ by Mantegna. If you love art as much as we do, then consider our Skip the Line tour with a passionate guide. Check the link in the description below for more details. The enormous Sforza Castle, which you see behind me, was built in the late 1300s to defend the city wall and the city gates. In 1450, it was beefed up by the Duke of Sforza and later became a Renaissance palace with the very famous house guest of Leonardo da Vinci. You can definitely go inside of the courtyard for absolutely free and check it out or visit one of the many museums. But it's a definitely one of the top things that you should see in Milan because it's quite shocking to see a castle right in the middle of the fashion capital of Italy. The historic Sforza Castle is included in our Milan in a Day tour. If you love history as much as we do, check out our tours in the description below. Canals have existed in Milan since the 12th century. Leonardo da Vinci devised a complex system of city-wide canals in the 15th century. Today, this area is considered one of the most beautiful in the city. Many bars, cafes, restaurants, and art galleries line the canals, making this a popular area and a perfect place to spend an evening in Milan. Probably the world's greatest opera house. I mean, it was built in the late 1700s, and anybody who's anybody in the opera world has performed there. It was opened by Salieri, who was a contemporary of Mozart. Verdi's music is premiered here, Toscanini conducted here, Placido Domingo, Pavarotti, Maria Callas, any big name in opera has performed here. So as a music lover, and anybody who loves music, you should definitely check this out. I made it inside of the world famous La Scala Opera House and your ticket to the museum grants you access to have a glimpse of the inside of the opera house without having to see a performance. Definitely recommend that you buy a ticket for a performance, but the first step is to check out the museum and get a peek inside at the stage. So at the end of the 19th century, when Italy unified under the Risorgimento, the Gallery of Vittorio Emanuele was built as a celebration to that unification, and it's the first building of its kind in Italy. There are incredible mosaics inside, a glass dome, and an absolutely important tradition that you have to take part in. So let's do this. So as you walk in to the Galleria, you're instantly transported to the romanticism of the 19th century. So you have four beautiful arcades or two long arcades that crisscross right in the center underneath a glass dome, which we're walking towards. Anti horario, anti. Okay, so she's saying I have to spin counterclockwise. Anti horario, e, e quale? Sinistra? Okay, e con la sinistra. Si, si. One of the traditions that you have to do inside the Galleria is to spin on the balls of this particular bull in order for you to have good luck and maybe return back to Milan. So here I go, ready? Done. Come back.
One of the top things to do here in Milan is to definitely check out the cathedral, otherwise known as the Duomo. Commissioned by the Duke of Milan in 1386, in Italy, the Milan Duomo is second only to St. Peter's Basilica in size. Inside, it's a cavernous 12,000 square feet of marble supported by 52 pillars. One highlight is the sculpture of St. Bartholomew. After spending quiet time inside, heading to the roof is an absolute must. To get up close to one of the 135 spires, or 3,400 statues, head to the rooftop. It's a popular site, so make sure you have your ticket or tour booked well in advance. For tickets, skip the line access, and stories from a passionate guide, be sure to check out our tours in the link below. If you're in Milan, the undoubted number one thing to do and experience is the iconic Last Supper by Renaissance master Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo's masterpiece, Il Cenacolo, or Last Supper, is located in the Dominican dining hall of Santa Maria della Grazie. Traditionally, the mural represents da Vinci's masterful chiaroscuro technique, his use of perspective, and dramatic storytelling. It is a miracle the painting survived Napoleon's troops, a World War II bomb, and shading restoration attempts throughout the years. This fragile work is viewed in very limited small groups for a timed entry and in a controlled environment. It's the hottest ticket in Milan, so booking well in advance is essential. If you're looking for tickets, don't worry, we got you. Our tour of The Last Supper makes it easy to grab an exclusive reservation. Well, that ends my time here in Milan. I'm Angel Castellanos for The Tour Guy. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and ring that bell so you can find our next video. I'm gonna end my visit with another spin on the bull. What?